right guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm back up here at Grafton Archery Outdoors here in China Grove, North Carolina, and I am reviewing Elite's very first carbon offering to the market, the Elite Carbon Era. So if this is a new era of bows that Elite is bringing out to the market in a carbon bow, they definitely did not disappoint. They actually impressed me with the carbon offering that they're bringing to the market. This is the first that they've done, and to be honest with you, I. Not that I expected anything less from Elite, but usually people's first attempt at some things, maybe not their greatest. But Elite spent a lot of years developing and creating a carbon bow that is probably one of the better ones on the market, if not the best carbon offering on the market. So everything about this bow is very, it's Elite. They didn't sacrifice anything when they went from their aluminum Omnia to this carbon era. They still made it look very much to brand. They still have the pockets in the limbs. This bow from the side profile still looks like you would almost mistake this for an aluminum bow because it just, it looks like it. It doesn't have some radical design that looks nothing else like what they have. They definitely kept the shape and profile of their bow very true to form. I think that's pretty cool. It makes it very distinct. You know when you look at this, you know it's an elite. So let's go over some of the specs on this Carbon Era. This bow comes in at 31 and a quarter inch ATA with a seven and a quarter inch brace height, which is pretty generous. It comes in draw lengths from 25 and a half to 31 inches. So this bow will pretty much fit most archers on the market. It comes in draw weights from 40, 50, 60, 65 and 70 pound limbs. The adjustable let off on this will go up to 90% and down somewhere in like the 70% range. So you have a lot of adjustability in the let off on this bow to really get it tuned to your liking and your holding weight. This bow comes in at a 336 feet per second. So again, it's not one of the fastest bows in the market, but it is definitely not a slow bow. If you're a tweener, like someone like myself, who's a 29 and three quarter ish draw length, in order for me to get there, I'd have to either manipulate my D-loop length, I would have to twist up the cables a little bit, I'd have to go to a bigger mon, take a few turns out of the cables, I'd, just, I'd have to do some manipulating to get it the way that I want it to feel. But now with this new cam and this new mod system that they have, you can actually make those quarter inch increments and really get it set. Elite doesn't really want you twisting on the cables, not to say that I'm not going to, but with the less that you have to twist these from the factory settings, it makes it where the, the cam is efficient as it's supposed to be and it's in its maximum range. Once you start twisting these things, the cam can get maybe a little off and maybe lose a little bit of efficiency. So without having to do that, that's going to maintain your performance out of this bow and you wanna get everything out of your bow as possible. Some other features that Elite has on here is they have not only just their adjustable draw stop from their V2 micro mod here, but they actually have the option where you can go from a cable stop which is currently the way it's set up or there is a post you can put in here and you can actually go to a limb stop so if you're someone who likes a really hard back wall and you want to be able to pull against something that's not going to give any bit at all you can have this set up so it is now a limb stop and that thing is going to be absolutely rock solid on the back wall this bow is currently set up at 29 and three quarter inches so it's set exactly the way I want it to. It's at 70 pounds and it has set at 90% let off because I felt like when I was shooting this and playing with it, that was the most extreme dump into the valley. And I wanna give you guys a representation of that. Me personally, when I go to make one of these, if I get one of these bows, I would adjust this down into the, you know, that 80% range. For me, I feel like it gets me another foot or two a second and it makes that dump a little bit easier. And personally, I like a little higher holding weight uh, it just feels better for me. I aim a little better. So when you're tuning one of these bows, if you do have a paper tear, what Elite is offering, which other bow companies on the market are now offering, is a way to adjust your cam lean and not have to put this bow in a press. You don't have to put the bow in a press, change out shims, you don't have to do a bunch of fancy things, you don't have to twist up yokes. So what you actually are gonna do is you're gonna loosen up the set screw on the back of the riser here where the limb pocket meets the riser and you're gonna turn this button head right here and it actually gives you a nice little diagram on which way to go depending on your paper tear. And you can, what it's going to do is it's going to adjust the lean in the limb pocket itself, which is going to translate to cam lean. And once you can adjust that cam lean, you can clean up a little bit of those tears and still maintain your center shot at 13 16 through the bow. 
So I think that's really cool that they're offering a way for someone like myself or maybe you who maybe lives too far away from a bow shop or likes to tinker with your own stuff. You now have that option to do that and really fine tune your adjustment without having to go to the bow shop and get this thing pressed or buying a press yourself. So let's get a few arrows to this thing. And then once we do that, we're gonna get some speed tests with some actual hunting arrows because IBO speeds for me, they mean absolutely nothing. I wanna know what my hunting arrow is gonna push out of this bow. I personally like to see something in that 275 plus range under 300. So if I can get a hunting arrow shooting in that range, I know I'm gonna have a nice flat shooting arrow. My pin gaps are gonna be marginal and it just gives me more options of when I go to shoot. So, all right, here we go. <clears throat> yes, this is a carbon bow and no, I'm not really a huge fan of carbon bows personally, but this one is awesome to shoot. For me, carbon is just not worth the price tag for someone like myself. Lives in North Carolina, doesn't really get that cold. I'm not really concerned about how much my bow does or doesn't weigh. So the benefits of carbon are they're lighter and they're warm to the touch in cold weather or they don't transfer cold in the cold weather like aluminum does. And I'm not hunting in those cold conditions, but if those are important to you, then a carbon bow is something that you're gonna look at. So this is set at, like I said, 29, three quarters, 70 pounds, 90% let off. It's got a little bit of a dump into the back wall, but that 90% is what's causing that. You can turn this down with the V2 micro mods down to 80%, if that's something that you want, 70%, something that's going to help that transition a little bit into the back wall. But honestly, it's not terrible. Draw cycle is a little stiff overall, but nothing more than I think anything else. It's just got a little bit of a dump. I really like the grip on this bow. It's got a really nice, it's kind of hard to see, but it's got, instead of it being flat all the way up on both sides, it's got a really nice taper for the webbing of your hand down here in the center. It fits really nice where it's just a little bit thinner up here by the shelf. And it's honest, it's one of the better fitting grips that I've shot. The axle to axle length is a little steeper than I'd like, but it's not terrible. It's something I could definitely manage. The bow doesn't want to do, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of hand shock. Just like other carbon bows, it's got a little bit of a snap and the bow itself on the shot wants to just kick out on the bottom just a little bit, but it's nothing unmanageable or bad. Nice slow draw, let down. Wants to go a little bit on the let down, but that's probably for the 90%. One more slow draw. Like I said, it's a little stiff, but it's not terrible. It's a nice shooting bow, man. So let's actually set the chrono up. Let's get a few arrows through this thing, give you guys some real world arrow speeds with some pretty different weight arrows, something that I would hunt with personally, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. And if this is a bow that is in my interest looking for this year. All right guys, let's get a speed test on this carbon era. This is a uh, bow that IBO is at 336 feet per second. So not particularly a super fast bow, but it is definitely on par with a lot of the rest of the bows on the market. And I'm gonna be shooting the same three arrows that I shot in my Omnia video. They are going to be a 440 grain, a 507, and a 561 grain arrow. I shot all of these out of my Matthews V3X, and I will go ahead and link those numbers right down here below so you can get a comparison of what a 78 pound v3x with 80 percent let off mods is doing at 30 inches compared to this carbon elite carbon era so let's get to shooting some of these 440 grain arrow out of this elite carbon era Two hundred and eighty two feet per second, so a little bit slower, but it it should be five hundred and seven grains. Two sixty three, so it's definitely a little bit slower.
than that Omnia. But it's also IBO'd 10 feet per second slower, so it's what you'd expect. 561 grains. 253 feet per second. So I would not consider this a flamethrower by any means, but it is definitely, I think, on par with some of the other bows pulling in the same draw weight cycle and you know IBO rated speeds. I think this one fits kind of right in that middle. It's not overly aggressive on the speed and it's really comfortable to shoot, so. All right, after shooting this bow, this is the Elite Carbon Era. This thing's actually, it's really nice to shoot. The draw cycle on it is a little stiff, like the Omnia, the dump into the back wall through that valley is a little aggressive at 90%, in my opinion. But with the adjustment on the V2 Micro Mod, you could really clean that up and smooth a lot of that out. This thing becoming in quarter inch draw increments is really cool. I really like the set adjustment where I can adjust the cam lean without having the need to press it. I mean, I own a press, but it's kind of a pain in the ass when I have a little bit of paper tear that I want to clean up that I have to go to the press and shim it or change collars or whatever else I have to do to get that changed. Now I can just sit here with my Allen pack and really make those fine tune adjustments and not have to be limited to what shims are. And if you've ever take a cam out of a bow and they have shims, it is an absolute nightmare trying to get them all back in, especially if you drop them on the floor. So not having to have to worry about that, it's pretty good. It's pretty smart thinking by Elite and it's pretty good technology that they have. And if carbon is your thing, this is one of the lightest carbon bows on the market. But overall, this thing is an awesome bow to shoot. Had a great time shooting it. It's definitely something that I would look for if I was looking for something in that like 31 inch axle to axle range. It's definitely a forgiving bow. And if you guys are up in the China Grove area, North Carolina, come check out Grafton Archery and Outdoors. Come see Colin, the guys will get you set up on one of these. You can shoot it and you can see what I'm talking about. But if you like this review, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna watch more bow review videos like this or more just stuff on general archery because that's pretty much all this channel is. Hit that subscribe button down below and we'll catch you out on the next video.